I am now. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Survive the weather? Yeah? It's so good to see everybody. Um, I would love to take this moment. We haven't done this in a while. I think sometimes when it's cold and, and we're waking up, I think it's good to greet each other, but you know what we've done before. So I'd like for this side over here to turn and wave to this side. <laughs> You guys cheated. I didn't tell you guys to wave yet. Thanks for listening. Now I'd like for this side to wave to that side. I see they're waving back. Nobody's. All right. Oh, well, tell them to stand up and sing. I took names who didn't wave. So anyway, welcome, welcome. Let's stand and sing, shall we? Can we sit and sing? You can sit if you want. Christ. 
Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take, Take delight, delight in the Lord, and, and he, he will, will give, give you the, the desires, desires of your heart. heart. Commit, Commit your, your way, way to the Lord, Lord. Trust, trust in him, him and, he and he will act. act. He will make your vindication shine like the light, and the justice of your cause like noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. come to you with all the praise and all the glory this morning. We give thanks for the opportunity to come into your house to worship you, to be able to give praise with our whole hearts. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit can continue to speak to us this morning through spoken word, through music, through fellowship, Lord, that we are in the presence of you. So we give you this time and we give you our hearts and we give you this service that we take today, not only here in this short time that we have together, but as we leave here today as well, Lord. That we remember that you are always with us. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Good morning again. It's so good to see everyone here. I am going to go through several announcements this morning. As you can see through the bulletins, we will continue to do um, activities on Wednesday night, the prayer meetings and all that. Along with Ash Wednesday, we will have an opportunity for two of those on Wednesday, March 2nd at 7 p.m. And then we'll also be offering a 1030 a.m. service as well. So I want to make sure that you're aware of that. But here are some announcements that are not in there that I want to announce. We are pleased to announce two small groups that will soon begin. Beginning Sunday, February 27th at 6 p.m., Janet Wolf will facilitate a six-part study titled Verse Mapping Luke. Verse Mapping Luke, sorry, the goodness of God's Word. In this six-session video Bible study, another author, Christy Cambron, invites you on a journey through the Gospel of Luke using a technique that revolutionized her time with God verse mapping. 
If you have a deep desire to unpack the meaning of Scripture you're reading, but you want to do it in a simple way, then verse mapping is for you. Verse mapping includes Hebrew, Greek, and work studies, word studies, finding connections in Scripture, comparing Bible translation, and learning as much as you can from your time with the Holy Spirit. I think that's going to be a great study that, that you can get involved with, too. Another opportunity, beginning March 4th at 10 a.m., Mary Frobish will facilitate a small group study titled The Women of Easter by Liz Curtis Higgs. Encounter the Savior with Mary of Bethany, Mary of Nazareth, and Mary Magdalene. The resurrection of the Lord is the most glorious, victorious moment in history. You will have the opportunity to watch these ancient scenes unfold through the eyes of three women who were eyewitnesses to the resurrection. The sign-up sheets for these will be in the narthex. Both groups will meet in the media room of the church. Other groups will be announced as their plans are finalized, so there are more coming. Look forward. We are excited. There's one other thing that I want to talk about is we're excited to announce that a service of believers' baptism will be held on Easter Sunday, April 17th. If you've been considering taking the most important step in your faith journey, please speak to one of us, Pastor Jim or myself. What an exciting time for the church. So we I want to announce the, the believer's baptism Sunday, April 17th as well. I believe that does all the announcements. I would love for the children to come forward now, please. Well, good morning. Oh, come on. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, here. I have a question to ask you. How did you get here? A car? Did you drive? No? Well, how'd you get here then? Your mom and dad brought you? Yeah, right. There's times that people bring you to church, right? I don't think... Do any of you walk to church? Pastor Jim does not walk to church. So, there are people that bring you to church, right? Whether it's mom, dad, grandma, grandpas, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends. I think that's important that someone has invited you to church. They care enough about you to invite you to church. That's exciting to me. In the Bible, there's a story that talked about when Jesus was talking to his disciples. And people were bringing their children they were bringing their children to, so Jesus could touch them. And people got mad about it. They didn't like that. that, that I don't like that story. You know what? Jesus didn't either. You know what Jesus said? That these young people are the kingdom of heaven. And he gathered them up and talked to them and listened to them. I think that's so... You know, you might be wondering yourself, why in the world do we do this every Sunday? Why do we have you guys come up? I think you need to know how important you are. Not just to us, but to Jesus as well. So I want you to remember that. And I want you to remember the next time that when you invite somebody to church, that you're taking a step of faith and inviting them to let them know that they're cared and loved for by God as well. Okay? Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for these young people. We pray every week over them, Lord as a congregation, and as a family. We ask that your blessings upon them to give them strength, encouragement. Let them know that they're loved. They're loved by us. But let them remember that they're loved by you unconditionally. Lord, we thank you for placing them in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to watch them grow. Let us never take them for granted. And we lift them up to you now. As we lift up our gifts of our tithes and offerings, Lord, we pray for those because those gifts make it possible to reach out to surrounding communities, to this community, to this church, that we can continue to do your ministry for someone that may be searching, someone that may be hurting, that we can be that light, that light of love, that we represent you in everything that we do. 
And we pray this in your name. Amen. sweetest name of all, Jesus, you always hear me when I call, oh Jesus, you pick me up each time I fall, you're the sweetest, the sweetest name of all, Jesus, how I love to praise your name. Jesus, you're still the first, the last, the same. Oh, Jesus, you died and took away my shame. You're the sweetest, the sweetest name of all. Jesus, you're the soon and coming King. Jesus, we need the up and sing, you're the sweetest, the sweetest name I know. We thank you, Lord God, for each gift that we've received, for those who've come forward and brought their gifts, for those who send them by other ways. We are so blessed, God, to have so much, and we need to say thank you from time to time. We just need to be aware of what we've received. So we thank you for these gifts of tithes and offerings. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Just a few minutes ago, Pastor Jay shared with you some information about a couple of small group studies that are going to be offered in the next few weeks, one beginning next week, the Bible mapping, which is an interesting um, look at Scripture. We watched a couple of them, and I pondered over this study. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If you do this one, uh, you're going to be changed because this one is really going to take some work. And not homework, now, not, not pre-homework. You get to do the homework after you do the lesson. But I was watching this one yesterday, and the woman was speaking about prayer. Actually, she was talking about Luke 11, verses 9 and 10. And she does do some Greek studies. It's very, very simple. I mean, she puts the word up there. It's there for you to look at. There's nothing complicated about it at all. But I kept thinking about what she was saying. I kept thinking about what we do here every single week and how we have said for years and years, how's your prayer life? As I listened to her exposition of these two verses, it occurred to me something that I should have said a long time ago, something I really should have actually unpacked myself a long time ago. Prayer, this will not shock any of you, prayer is a verb. Now, as a standalone word, it's a noun. If you look it up in the dictionary, prayer is a noun. But it's not a noun. Prayer is a verb. Jesus told a little story. He said, you know, there's a guy who um, got company in the middle of the night. And so he goes to his neighbor, and he goes banging on the neighbor's door saying, give me some food, I got company. And the guy says, leave me alone, I'm in bed. I'm not going to get up and help you. And the guy keeps beating on the door till finally the guy gets up and gives him whatever he wants just to get rid of him. It's an interesting story, isn't it? But it talks about persistence. And it also talks about prayer being a verb. Here's why prayer is a verb. Ask, that's a verb, right? And it will be given you. Search, is that not a verb? And you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Prayer is always a verb. 
regardless of the language we use about it, whether it's intercession or petition or whatever word we use, the truth is prayer is always a verb. Prayer is always requiring some activity on our part, always some engagement. So we say, how's your prayer life? And we put different pictures up every week, and we sing a song, and I say the same kinds of things. I ask you to remember people in your pray- in prayer, and I want you to remember Andy Bonavier. He was on the prayer chain yesterday. That's Ed's son. He fell in the snow last week and did a lot of damage to himself, and uh, he was quite concerned about him. So please remember him in your thoughts and prayers. Prayer is defined in the dictionary as a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God. Verbs. You're catching on. Prayer, prayer is an activity. Even sitting quietly and waiting on God is an activity. The, um, I, I look at this uh, devotion online from YouVersion. I don't know whether some of you have heard of YouVersion or not. But the verse of the day today was from Psalm 46, verse 10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. And in the message, it comes like this. Attention all. Attention all. See the marvels of God. He plants flowers and trees all over the earth. Bans war from pole to pole. Wow, I wish that was the case. Breaks all the weapons across his knee. And here's what I really want you to hear. Step out of the traffic. Step out of the traffic. Take a long look at loving look at me your high god above politics above everything prayer is a verb where were you on 9 11 2001 some of us were at work some of us were at home where were we that evening we were here because we sensed it was a crisis we were here because we had experienced something we'd never been through before, and we knew that the way to deal with that was to come here actively praying for God's intervention. So I have a hard question for you and for Jim. How come the church isn't full now? How come we open the doors on Wednesday but people don't pray? I, I, I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. I would suggest that the crises that we face in this country right now are as dire as any we've ever faced. And they're all internal. So if it was important enough when the planes hit the towers, why isn't it important now? Now, I'm not berating you. You're here. I just wonder why instead of churches growing at this point in time, they're diminishing. Why is it when you look around to find a pastor, you, the, the people in charge say, eh, there's not too many out there. Why is it that instead of being here engaged in this active role of praying, I'm too tired, it's too cold. Again, it's not about you, but every single week I say the same thing. How's your prayer life? Every single week. I realize my own failures and my own weaknesses, but also realize all the possibilities that come from asking and seeking and knocking, because there's a promise with that. Everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who knocks will find. Everyone who seeks, the door will be open. You know, there's a promise there. So a little extra added bonus today. Prayer is a verb. Let's sing the first verse of Near to the Heart of God. There is a place of
So that was 30 seconds. Started to feel long, didn't it? Started to feel like maybe we need to shuffle around a little bit or get a drink or something. How difficult it is for us, God, to come near to your heart because we are just so consumed by the busyness that's around us. So consumed by the need to answer emails and answer the text and pick up the phone. So consumed by the busyness of the traffic around us that we can't step out of the traffic and come near to your heart for just a few seconds. It was only 30 seconds. But even that begins to feel a little oppressive to us because we're so bound to the calendar, bound to the clock. Help us to find that time to step out of the traffic. Renew within us a right spirit, God, that reminds us that, that prayer is a verb, and, and, and if we're going to find a way to get close to your heart, it's going to be by setting aside time to be with you. If we don't set aside time to be with our friends, we lose the relationship. We find it very quickly. And we found, we found it incredibly fast in the last two years to, to have been separated from our friends and not be able to rebuild those relationships to where they once were. And we've all sensed it. There, it's called COVID fatigue. I think it's spiritual fatigue as well. We've just decided that church isn't really important. Worship doesn't mean anything to us. And besides that, we can watch it on television. So why get up and go? And we fail to give you a little bit of time to step out of the traffic, to step out of the hectic things that impede upon our, impinge upon our lives all the time. Lord God, remind us that you are waiting to hear from us. Just a word. You're just glad when we call. You know, the old joke is call your mother. Well, you just like to hear from us once in a while. Prayer is a verb. To ask. To seek. To knock. To listen. To petition. And sometimes it's just to say thank you. Sometimes there's really no big hairy deal that's going on except we just want to say thank you. What a gift that must be to your ears. That we give up our lamenting and our complaining and we just say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for prayer. We thank you for healing. We thank you for your presence in our lives. And we thank you for this community of faith. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to share with you two passages of Scripture this morning. The first is from Genesis in the first five verses of the first chapter, which say, In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And then from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, the first five verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There are two views of creation. One is called creation ex nihilo, which means creation out of nothing. And the text supports that, that there was nothing there and God created everything from nothing. The other is the understanding that this formless void was there. And somehow from this formless void came the, the stuff of which God created the earth. And I said, the text supports both those views. And you will hear me pray sometimes ex nihilo because I can support either view. But today, here's the point I want to take with you. Everything was a flipping mess. Everything was absolutely chaotic. 
Everything was without form and substance. And what's God do? God gives form and substance to what had none. God gives form and substance to a formless void. God breathes across it, ruach, that wonderful, that wonderful Hebrew word which means air, breath, wind of God, blows across this mess and creates from this mess some sense of order. Look, God is a God of order. Let there be light, and there was light. And God separates light from the darkness, and there's day. And the Word becomes flesh and brings to this little planet the very presence of God to bring about form, to bring about purpose, to bring about substance into our life. How many of you, you can raise your hands or you can not, have felt at some point in time like your life had no value whatsoever? How many of you have stumbled and failed? Anybody besides me? I spent most of yesterday beating myself up over a meeting I was in because I didn't think I handled it very well. Of all the dumb things to do, I can't change it. The only thing I can do is maybe next time I do a little bit better job, right? You know what? God does not look at what I did yesterday, and God does not hold yesterday against me. God comes in and says, Hey, lick your wounds if you got to, but get over yourself. Because the light came into the world. That's why I put these two things together. In the beginning, when God created, in the beginning was the Word. And what's the first thing God created? Light. What's the first thing God created? Light. And God separated light from darkness. God separates light from darkness in your life and in my life. I don't get it right all the time, do you? I'd like for all the perfect people to stand up, if you would, please. We will be taking names. Can you write this down when the perfect people stand up, please? Thank you. It won't take long. Could I ask all the sinners to stand? Could I ask all of us who need light to stand? Can I ask all of us who need to feel like there's a lot of chaos that needs to be straightened out? Thanks be to God, the light came into the world. Thanks for standing. You can be seated. I appreciate that. That was a little extra. I wasn't even planning on doing that. Who, did you stand up with the sinners? Oh, good. Okay. I, just went, I knew he didn't stand up with the perfect. It took him a while. Was, oh, he had to think about it. Did you really have to think about it? Oh, okay. You know, the light shines in the darkness. You know what? No power on earth, no power in hell can take away the light. However, having said that, I can take it away. I can choose. I can choose to leave it. I can choose to walk away. I can choose to stop praying. I can choose to stop caring. I can choose to let chaos run supreme in my life. I was looking at my calendar, and some of you do the same thing. I'm going, oh my goodness, I got to go here. And I get home for five days, and I got to go somewhere else, and I got to do this, and I got to do that, and I got to. The light came into the world to say, hey, you know, take a breath. Like the psalmist said, and the message paraphrases it, said, get out of the traffic. Get out of the traffic. Get out of all this stuff, and take a couple of minutes and sit down. And remember, you take a long, loving look at the high God, above politics and above everything. God save us from politics. I am so glad. I'm serious about what I'm going to say now. I am very glad that we believe church and state are two different things. Now, my politics is informed by my theology. Make no bones about it. I have profound political beliefs based on deep theological commitments. But I don't get to come in here and tell you what you do politically. One of the things you might want to try, this is not politics, this is just, you might want to turn off the television once in a while. You know, we were um, on vacation last week, whenever it was. You know, it was nice in Florida. It ain't that nice here. Anyway, I digress. I didn't watch the news all week. You know what? I was okay. I managed. Now, did I see some things pop up on the phone? Sure. Did I get some emails? Yeah. 
you know, things I really just probably would have rather not done. Step out of the traffic and realize that the light has come into the world. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. There's conflict always. That, that fifth verse of John speaks to a coming conflict because somebody's going to try to extinguish the light. Somebody's going to try to make it, diff- make it difficult to follow the light. The only person that can take the light from you is you. The only person that can keep you from following the light that is the living Word of God is you. I can't take it away from you. Only you can. The devil can't take it away from you, but you can. You can choose to walk away from God. You can choose to turn your back on the light. Or you can walk in the light as he is the light. You can walk as a child of light. Paul told the Ephesians to live as children of light. And then I know I've said this a million and one times, and I'll probably say it for the next eight or nine weeks, whatever it is. Just to remind us, verse 14. In my humble opinion, probably the most important words in all of Scripture, even more important than John 3.16, in my view. The Word became flesh and lived for a while among us. And when the Word became flesh and lived for a while among us, we saw what God is like. Jesus does not just speak the Word of God or do the works of God. Jesus is literally the Word of God and the works of God. Step out of the traffic. Isn't that an interesting paraphrase on be still and know that I am God? Step out of the traffic. Put the calendar down. Oh, my Lord, there are moments I really like. There, there's something I'd like to be rid of, and that's email. Oh, my Lord, do you know, I bet I get, I don't know, I digress, but, you know, I got to tell you, the denomination is driving me nuts with emails. And then try to follow those threads, you know, and I'm looking for something, and, and I have to follow 15 threads to get to the one thing I want. I want to step out of that stuff sometimes. I want a little quiet. I want a little peace. I want a, just a time to say, I want to come near to the heart of God and to do that. I just gotta, I just gotta be still for a while. I gotta step out of the traffic. I gotta ask for peace. I gotta seek the light. I gotta knock on the door to realize that that I am the beloved child of God. You are the beloved child of God. Nothing's gonna take that from you unless you choose to reject it. You're listening carefully. Remember what Jesus said in the third chapter of John? This is judgment, that the light came into the world, but people chose darkness over light. That's judgment. That's not my word. That's the gospel. That's the gospel's words. Right after, for God so loved the world. This is judgment. This is judgment. I choose light. I choose life. In the world, you're going to have persecution. Oh, my gosh. But what's the rest of that verse say? Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let us be overcomers. Now, I don't mean to be trite. That's the title of a song, isn't it? Overcomer? Yep, sorry about that. Mandisa, okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Look around. Pray. Walk in the light. The scene is the light. Well, I've been all over the place, haven't I? <laughs> when, um, Lord, this is harder than I ever thought it was going to be. I got to tell you, um, I took Ken Meadham up and picked up Ken Meadham and Beverly Vandermolen to take him to the airport, I guess, that Monday morning when they were leaving. And he said, we'll be thinking about you between now and April. And he said, you got a lot to do. I'd like to end well. The one thing I will try to do is end faithful. Darn, I didn't expect it to be this hard. (laughs) I really thought it would be easier. Walk in the light. He is the light. Be the people of God. Prayer is a verb. I need to stop. Amen.
I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died for just a moment. This is John Rybert. If you haven't met him, you need to do that. He comes yeah. and he wants to join the family by Christian experience. What is your pleasure? Yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. I will tell you a little secret. I came by here Thursday. What day does it snow? Thursday? Friday morning. And I find him out here shoveling snow, so he's already found a place. <laughs> we are so glad you're here. You come up and welcome him this morning, okay? Ignore me. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us.